So, so a few months ago, well, a few years ago, maybe now, I wrote <laughs> a uh, script of or a, for my top ten favorite video games, and it was for like my newsletter. And then eventually, we mm -hmm. did a thing on YouTube using the same script. Um, okay. And I have not read this. I was thinking it. We haven't really talked specifically about video games on the podcast. We have not. We We've have done. mentioned many mm -hmm. times the ones that we like, uh, but we have not gone in depth. And you and I play video games very differently. We do. Uh, let's start with like childhood stuff, right? Before we get into it. What's your background as a kid with video games? My background as a kid. So we never really had all the fancy consoles and stuff. Like you and I are more or less the same age. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're born in 76. 75. 75, I'm 77. Mm -hmm. So we grew up with a lot of the same touchstones. We did eventually, when I was in, I want to say sixth grade, get an original Nintendo NES. And we had um, Mario and we had Tetris and we had ice hockey. And I love that old ice hockey game. It was great. Uh, we did borrow from my friend who had the original NES, um, Final Fantasy VI, okay. which at the time was called Final Fantasy III or something. I but is We played six. It's the one with Super Kefka. Nintendo. Well, no. Yeah. Because we never had a Super Nintendo. It's a Super Nintendo game. Well, maybe we also borrowed his Super Nintendo. Yeah, because, <laughs> um, because six is Super Nintendo. Okay. I, I guarantee it because seven is PlayStation, and I played all I played all the Final Fantasies that were released in the states, mm -hmm. which is only three of them. That's why six to us That's was why Final six Fantasy was called three. three. Yeah, and I had to have a new Super Nintendo to play in order to play it. Well, yeah. I must have borrowed the console as well mm -hmm. as the game and just devoured that game. I had never played the earlier stuff like uh, the original Legend of Zelda. Never, I've never played any Zelda game actually. Oh wow! Uh, but uh, Final Fantasy three, which is actually six, uh -huh. made me a huge Final Fantasy fan, and I've played a lot of uh, um, JRPGs since then. But that's kind of my original background. I also had non console stuff. We had a very early PC, and we played all the time. Um, you know, kind of early PC games that old grognards in the audience might recognize, like uh, one called Montezuma's Revenge, which was this. Uh, kind of puzzle solving game where you have to jump over things and go on conveyor belts and stuff. Uh, we played Dig Dug and we played Beast. Beast was awesome. And I have found an emulator. Someone on Twitter pointed me to an emulator that'll play Beast. And it's basically just, there's these monsters that are just the letter H because it was old ASCII graphics. And you could go around and you could push the terrain and you had to build traps and squish the beasts between terrain and uh, played the crap out of that game. I loved it. But that's my background, childhood yeah. video gaming. So I um, I actually started a little earlier than you, not just because I'm a little older, uh, but we had an original Atari mm. and then a mm -hmm. 2600 and then a Nintendo. Okay. Uh, the Nintendo has a fun story because the Nintendo, uh, I've told this story before on my live stream, so I apologize for those who have heard it, but I, when I was 11 years old, I got a chance to come visit my uncle in Salt Lake. I grew up in Nebraska. Yeah. This was my first time flying on a plane by myself. Ooh. I had gone before, you know, with my family, but flying by myself, going to stay with my uncle for a week in far off Salt Lake City, um, get to know my cousins. They're older than I am, but uh, I had never really gotten to know them. And uh, it's just a wonderful experience like yeah. I remember, I remember almost every detail of it, which I can remember nothing else of my life at that time. But I remember my uncle picking me up and having secretly switched his car from miles per hour to kilometers per hour because his car would do that and it had a digital display. <laughs> and then driving on the freeway and pointing at how fast we were going and being like, whoa, this uncle is so cool. Um, I remember my cousins who were into those kind of little rockets that you launch with the actual... Um, the, the little kind of firecracker motors yes. or fuel mm -hmm. things you yep. put in them. Yeah. Um, that were like, you know, they'd shoot them up and they'd parachute down. And we did those a bunch. Um, I remember my uncle worked at the university and he took me and showed me their fossil collection, like at the University of Utah. Some of the cool ones just behind the scenes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and my father, before I left, had handed me $200 and oh. said, your job is to buy your own food. 
and to make sure that your uncle doesn't have to take care of you too much in that regard. Take mm -hmm. everyone out to eat and things. And every time, of course, I tried to pay, my uncle refused. Um, and at the end, when it was time to go home, I had this like handful of the $200 and I tried to just give it to him and be like, here, take it. And he's like, nope, not going to take it. And I said, if I take it home, uh, I'll give it back to my dad. And he's like, no, you're not going to do that, kid. <laughs> and he drugged me to the KB toy store uh -huh. and he said, you spend that $200 so it doesn't go back in your dad's pocket. And I bought a Nintendo. Um, nice. One big purchase rather than split, splitting it up. Mm -hmm. It was very hard for me to decide, but I bought a Nintendo. Yeah. And uh, that story has lived with me ever since. <laughs> that is fantastic. In the same situation, at that same age, I almost certainly would have spent it on action figures. Because mm. that's, that's what I collected as a kid. So I had, but, um, and the Nintendo was far more foundational to me than the, the Ataris were. Mm -hmm. um, partially because I was younger with them, partially because the games were just so much better, right? Yeah. Like I got original Legend of Zelda for my birthday, uh, the Christmas it came out. The hot item, the gold box, really hard mm -hmm. to get. I played original Final Fantasy. I played um, uh, Dragon Quest One, which was like called Dragon Warrior, um, which was I the remember first, Dragon yeah, Warrior RPG I ever played. Um, and so that Nintendo was very, very influential uh, on me, though the Super Nintendo games were just so much better, mm. even than those original <laughs> Nintendo games. Uh, like the Super Nintendo games, I can go back and play on an emulator and really enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, I went and played Super Mario World on that. If I go back to original Super Mario Brothers, I know it's heresy to say, but it's kind of the Snow White uh, of video <laughs> games for me, where it's like, wow, I can appreciate what you did. Um, but... I am not interested in playing this game that much longer. Mm -hmm. um, that upgrade from the 8-bit to the 16-bit generation, oh, yeah. going from Final Fantasy 1, which is a fine game, to Final Fantasy 3 with a full epic storyline, and as opposed to, you know, yeah. just it's... random generic characters with no names. And that he was a huge, huge deal for me. Yeah, that was that was such a game changer for me as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that original game. And uh, you know, that is. Honestly, the last console I ever owned was that original Nintendo. Really? Uh, I have purchased for my children. Mm -hmm. We had a Wii U. Yeah. And uh, right now we've got an Xbox and a Switch. But those are all my kids and I don't really play them. Huh. Although now that I have a Switch in the house, I am super tempted to pick up uh, Fire Emblem or Triangle Strategy or something like that because yeah. I've got a thing on which to play it and that's the only platform you can get it on. More than anything else, I've always just been a PC gamer. And that started, uh, you know, not so much with the original Beast and things like that, but when I got to college and was rooming with Ben and he said, we should play Warcraft. And I'm like, what is Warcraft? And he said, let me open your eyes to the world. And we just fell as far down that hole as possible, playing Dune and Warcraft and uh, Command and Conquer and the original Diablo. And then Diablo 2 came out a couple of years after that. And- uh, Oh man, we played so much Diablo 2. Oh I played it with stars. you. I played yeah. it with uh, that game. I bet if you just look at a time sink, of game hours <laughs> that I've put into games, Diablo 2 is pretty high on my list. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be surprised if it's not number two uh, behind Civilization. Yeah, Diablo 2 was what, 99? Yeah. Uh, and it just, that devoured us. That actually started uh, the Time Wasters Guide, which was the game review yeah. website that you and I ran mm -hmm. uh, for years. And in a lot of ways, I can point to Diablo 2 as starting me not just down a hobby, but on my professional path. I had already had the magazine experience that we got mm -hmm. in college, uh, but the ability to um, you know, put on my resume that I created and ran a game review website back when most employers didn't know what a website was. Yep. Uh, that got so many doors open, and it's all Diablo 2. Mm. Um, I remember we would play Diablo 2 forever. And, uh, and I like to play hardcore, and I was yeah. the exception in that regard. This is <laughs> bringing up difference between Dan and Brandon's gaming styles, number one. Mm -hmm. um, I will pick the hardest, most punishing um, yeah. version of the game that I can play. Yeah, and I am usually not interested in that. Yeah. I don't play games to challenge myself. I play games to enjoy myself, which yep. is very different. Um, Diablo is exciting for me because I want to 
um, you know, see what cool things I can collect mm -hmm. and try to get sets of armor and things like that. Yeah. And look at this cool unique I found. And you are playing because you want it to be as hard as possible and you want to survive. Yep. Uh, which is interesting that I don't like survival games as much. Um, I really like Subnautica. Love Subnautica. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've played Subnautica. I have not played Subnautica, but I've um, heard really wonderful things. Uh, but I think it's because Subnautica, um, a lot of these survival games, they have, like, I don't like difficulty that doesn't feel appropriate for the game. Mm. Let me explain. For okay. instance, I don't go play the really tough Mario levels that are fan made. Um, uh, you're familiar with these? Do you have any idea what uh, I'm talking no, about? I have no idea. Oh wow! So there's fan made Mario there's levels. There's an entire world. There's thousands of these. <laughs> um, and what they are is they there's lots of different styles and flavors, but the most famous ones are just super punishingly difficult, uh, where you have to perform these incredible midair, grab a shell, knock it, jump off this thing, bounce it, catch the shell, then do it into a spin across this thing. And then, you know, like just <laughs> stuff like this. They're full of times where you jump where you think you need to, and there's an invisible block over your head. So you hit it and fall in a pit, right? Mm. Um, the, the games almost all start with you dropping into your death. And so you have to like perform a move in the air to not die um, <laughs> to the to the opening. I don't play those. I'm okay. not interested in those. Okay. Um, I really like the most difficult Mario levels that a Mario game puts into Mario, like the hidden difficult ones and things mm -hmm. like that. I find that level of challenge really good. Um, yeah. But I don't play these. And the survival horror aspect it feels like they add in difficulty in ways that just doesn't feel like fun difficulty to me it's hard to explain like dark souls love the difficulty of dark souls mm -hmm. uh, feels very appropriate it works with the setting it um it's punishing and difficult but not unfair most of the time um i just i really love that but i don't I don't play bullet hell games, for instance. A lot of the bullet hell games just get ridiculously difficult. What is difficult. a bullet hell game? A bullet hell game is the, they start, they're mostly the top down um, ship. You used to play them like Galaga started the bullet hell oh, uh, okay. thing. And they like scroll forward and then just all sorts of ships come oh, at you yeah. and shoot all kinds of bullets. I always have just called that a shooter game. Well, shooters encompass everything. Yeah. Uh, a shooter is anything that you shoot in. Well, yes, days. but first person shooters are different than old yeah. school shooters yeah. in my head. But bullet yeah. hell, okay. Yeah, bullet hell is what they call them. I don't play those. Okay. Um, though I really, there's a few of them that I, I respect. Like Ikaruga is this really interesting bullet hell is that game. The bullet switch, the color switching color one. Color switching one. I love that yeah. one. That's the um, only like yeah. scrolling shooter that I've ever really gotten into. Um, and so I like difficulty. But it has to have the right flavor of difficulty for me. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, one of my very first gaming experiences um, that was also very foundational was original Wolfenstein, Escape from Castle Wolfenstein, mm -hmm. on the PC, um, which I loved. And I had too much time because I was a teenager. And I built it with the starting weapon, right? Yeah. Um, and then I built Beat Doom with only the chainsaw, right? Like, these are things that I used to do as a kid to find the difficulty mm -hmm. that I wanted in the games. To make it as hard as possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I remember being in college and, uh, you know, starting to do game reviews. And I was sent by uh, some game company, Serious Sam. Oh, yeah. And oh. I remember just devouring that. And I came in to you know, the magazine one day and said, you know, it's too bad that I'm the only one here who likes shooters because you should all love this. And you were like, wait, what? Mm. And I had no idea at the time that you played, you know, first person shooters. Serious Sam is amazing. I got to introduce you to Serious Sam, yeah. which was still one of my very favorites. Um, I've spent more time running backwards mm -hmm. shooting in that game than you know, I think in all other shooters combined. Serious Sam is what Duke Nukem should have been. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I... I think another big difference between us and our gaming styles is I want a game to be a puzzle I figure out. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty being a puzzle I figure out. I do not want to be figuring out other people, which means that I am not very interested in Warcraft. Um, mm. and I'll play the single player campaign, really fun, Starcraft yeah. same way, because I want to figure out the game and how it works 
And I do, and I want it to end. Those are kind of two of yeah. my impulses here. So I don't play any games that I'm playing against another person. Uh, just doesn't interest in me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even play the Magic the Gathering online game one. Yeah. Um, I am interested in, here's this game. Can I figure out how this game works? Can I figure out how to beat this game? Can I figure out how to beat the difficulty level of this game is a puzzle for me to unlock. And other players is a just different feeling entirely. And yeah. I know one of your favorite games is Overwatch. Uh, I love, I, I am really into esports. Mm-hmm. And so like figuring out the minutia of a game system in contrast to you does not interest me uh i've been trying to find fun rpgs i can play on my phone and most of them are just so complex that i lose interest uh Mm. the one that i found and played a lot you know last week and i'm like oh maybe this is gonna scratch the itch for me um but then it turned out that you not only had to level yourself up you had to level up your equipment which turned that into a whole mini game of resource management and what am I going to want and what am I going to be using? And I'm like, I, that is not interesting to me. Whereas esports are very interesting to me. Um, and it took me a while to get into them. League of Legends was the first one uh, that I really played. Well, I take that back. I played a ton of Counter Strike um, way back in the day. But Counter Strike is very much just a team game. Uh, with League of Legends, when that one came out, it was the first time I saw a, a video game that where you played positions, mm-hmm. you know, in a sports sense. Right. Uh, that which you is know, really cool. It's very cool. And at first, I couldn't get my head around it, and I'm like, "That's dumb. I just want to, you know, play Warcraft three. I want to march out and kill monsters." And once I once it clicked in my head that like, no, these are sports positions, just like you have a quarterback or a you know a running back or a whatever. Um, now I adore those things. And so I will watch, like right now as we record this, uh, we're in the middle of League of Legends World Championships. Uh-huh. Um, my pickums were completely tanked, uh, which, you know, anyone who's following the World Championships knows exactly how badly they've been destroyed. Um, but I love that kind of stuff. I love to watch them. I am very bad at playing them, but that is most of what I play these days. Overwatch, League of Legends that sort of stuff. That's awesome. I mean, that's that's really interesting, particularly with our dynamic, because I think that if I were looking externally at the two of us, just, you know, looking at the lists of the <laughs> things that we like, I would have picked me to be that person. And I would have picked you to be the person who spent an inordinate, inordinate amount of time on civilization. Mm. Um, that's because uh, you love board games. I do. And I, and I do play a lot of Civ Six. Mm-hmm. Not as much anymore. Uh, that's the game that I will, you know, break out once a year, whatever current iteration of Civ, and I will play it exhaustively for about a week, and then mm-hmm. I'll be done. And I'm like, okay, I'm fine with this. Uh, but yeah, it makes sense that uh, you would expect me to be the game mechanic guy. Yeah. And it's not as interesting to me. And I think... You know, the same thing happened to me with the Final Fantasy series, which in the beginning was, you know, you level up and then you get access to a new power or a new spell or something like that. And then you get into, you know, Final Fantasy X with its gargantuan like sphere Mm -hmm. and you'd have to work your way through the most complicated tech tree I had ever seen before in my My life. My favorite Final Fantasy. It's a very good story. Mm That aspect of it isn't as interesting to me. That's one of the reasons that I love Diablo 3, which a lot of people don't like, mm-hmm. is because it lets you reallocate your skill points. I think pretty that much is at will. Just a boon that every game should have. Yeah. Uh, it, it plays to what both of us want. You want to have fun mm-hmm. and, you know, try screw things. I want to min max and figure out the best uh, thing on my own without having to look it up. Yeah. Um, and both of us are served by just letting us respec our characters to figure out what the best spec is for what we want to do. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a thing. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, maybe this is something we're similar on, maybe not. Uh, you were saying you were looking for good RPG. I have a lot of trouble with the turn-based RPG mechanics these days in that I just do not have the patience for the kind of classic 
I will go out and slay slimes until I'm level two. Go back, <laughs> buy a better sword to slay better slimes. Go out mm-hmm. and slay more slimes. And, you know, that was my bread and butter when I was a teenager. I yeah. loved that kind of incremental progress that you'd make by slaying slimes and things like that until you're, you know, this this awesome character that can take on the, the world. Just not interested. Every time I try to play them, even the Final Fantasies, mm-hmm. I bounce off of. Um, uh, because these days... I just want to get into a game fig- and try to figure out how the game works and enjoy it. This is why I really loved the new Doom, Doom Eternal and yeah. uh, Doom 2016, mm-hmm. um, because they don't hold your hand too much. They give you a nice thing, and then they throw you in. And you're like, all right, now you're going to play this game. It's why Breath of the Wild is my favorite uh, Zelda game, because most Zelda games, still very fun, are this sort of unlock get a new power move on they they do this mm-hmm. sort of little bit of metroidvania sort of thing where it's like you'll open up new parts of the map the breath of the wild is just like all right here's your tutorial here are all of your powers that's all you're going to have the whole game now go play the game for 80 hours and find different ways to use these powers in interesting combinations yeah and that was just wonderful for me <laughs> see everything i hear about breath of the wild makes me think that i would hate it mm. um which is weird because usually, you know, in a card game, yeah, that's what I want to do is mm-hmm. screw around with mechanics and find cool interactions. In a video game, absolutely not. Mm. That is not what I'm playing the video game for. Um, but you still can do the the kind of slow turn based RPG. Turn based is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, if something is based on me being a tactician rather than me being very quick with hand eye coordination, right. That is what I want to do. And so, like, the the RPG that I'm playing through right now um, is actually the Shadowrun stuff. And these are a few mm-hmm. years old at this point. Uh, but they had some recent Shadowrun things that I grabbed on Steam. And they're great because they don't have the grinding aspect. Mm-hmm. There isn't just, at least as far as I've gotten in the game, there is no big overworld where you need to go out and level up um, or Michael up, mm-hmm. uh, which is... <laughs> Our friend, our uh, our friend Alan, uh, he talks about grinding as Michaeling up mm-hmm. because his younger brother was Michael, and when you would get into you know whatever Final Fantasy thing and you'd get the Chocobo races or something, you could just say, "Here, Michael, play this race, collect all of these things, don't collect these things, and then you come back five hours later and you've gained like three levels and a bunch of treasure." Yep. Um, I actually still call it Michaeling up myself. Call, yeah, I, I, good. I'm glad because I also still call it Michaeling up because it's a wonderful word. Alan is also Layton from Bridge Four for those who enjoy the Stormlight books, and Professor Layton from the Arithmetist. Ah, yes, mm-hmm. that is true. Um, so yeah, grinding doesn't really thrill me, uh, but what Shadowrun does, and what some of my other ones that I really love do, uh, like Guild Wars Two, for example, mm-hmm. it, there's pretty much constant story. And if you are following the story, then you are keeping pace with levels and you are getting levels at about the right time for you to move on. And you don't have to feel like, well, now I have to go kill 17 wolves and then get this dumb thing. Oh, we agree 100% on that one. Because for me, this is one of those false difficulty things, right? Um, Anytime I'm playing one of those RPGs, and in fact, um, this started to hit me in the later Final Fantasies that I enjoyed, um, where... There is no difficulty because you can always just level up a little bit more and make it easy. Mm -hmm. Um, And granted, Dark Souls has a little bit of that too. They just balance it a little bit better. The the levels are so incremental um, that you don't notice you're getting stronger and stronger, uh, which which I really like. Mm -hmm. But the problem with the Final Fantasies I found in the later ones is they even took away that difficulty in that if you just have a party that is a full party and you know how to play a Final Fantasy game, you will never lose a battle. Um, And so the battles stop being a challenge. They start being a time sink that they're requiring you to spend in order to get to the the next part of the story. Mm -hmm. You have to, like, I started just to roll my eyes every time a random battle came up. Then I'm like, all right, I will push the button a bunch of times with my eyes closed. This just stole a bunch of my time and then I'll walk a little bit further in the dungeon and another battle will come up and I will close my eyes and push the same button. Um, And that just really started to bother me. And I agree. Those kind of random battles, I understand their value in some cases. Mm -hmm. Like as a game master, I will use random encounters 
judiciously. Yes. Because it is a way of making travel and time dangerous. Yeah, and make it seem to pass to yeah. the player. Um, where you, you want to go here? Well, okay, you can, but you're risking a possible random encounter. Whereas in a Final Fantasy dungeon, it literally is just a time sink. Like, here, you have to go through this dungeon and fight X number of fights, and then you get out the other side, and then we can continue the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, those are not as fun for me, and I don't enjoy them. Yeah, and it's interesting that I have, because of that, leaned further and further away from the... um the tactical stuff, um, because too many of them th- that feel similar to me. Like I never loved um, the Fallout tactics as much as you and Ben did, mm-hmm. and never loved like you mentioned the Fire Emblem games. I think they're good games. I've played some of them, um, but I would much rather be playing Hades than any of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just put me in a dungeon, give me a sword. Uh, let me figure out how the enemies all work and try to maximize um, my survival rate. And yeah. so something like Hades is just perfect for me. Those those rogue lights, they call them, mm-hmm. uh, that have just a little bit of a level up progression, but so that you don't get too disheartened, um, but enough of a punishing difficulty scale that yeah. you really have to get better at the game to get through it. Yeah. Now, it's interesting you mentioned Fallout mm-hmm. because... That was my favorite series until it turned into a first-person shooter. Right. Mm-hmm. I really always prefer, if I can get it, you know, in a single-player game, I want it to be strategy. Mm-hmm. I want, I, I love, you know, the turn-based thing where I've got a squad of people and I need to maneuver them on a map and, you know, take their turns because it is, like you said, kind of board game-ish. As soon as, you know, mm-hmm. the the first... Uh, I guess it was Fallout 3 was the first yes. shooter mm-hmm. version of it. And I played for See, maybe you just called an it a shooter. Hour. You just called I it a know, shooter. Be- and I knew when I said it, I'm like, he's uh, going to get me after this. Mm-hmm. Um, I played Fallout 3 for maybe an hour and was like, well, this just, this isn't fun for me. Um, I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but if I were going to pick, I would probably pick the first ones just because the writing is so much better in Fallout 1 and 2. Than it is in Fallout Three. And Writing that's, Fallout Two in particular is just stellar. That's a um, that's a function of the type of game they are. I don't think I'm not trying to point fingers at the writers of Fallout Three. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just very difficult to make a narrative-driven game in the style of game that they're that they're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. New Vegas does a much better job of it, um, and I really really like New Vegas for that reason. I thought New Vegas was the one everyone hated. No, New Vegas is the one everyone loves. Oh, okay. Three and four are the ones they don't like as yeah. much. I don't. I have no idea because I haven't played any yeah. of them. Uh, New Vegas, if you ever want to give one a try, New Vegas is great. That's the one um, to give a try, huh? Yep. A lot of the same writing team uh, from the original one and two. Okay. Uh, they brought back Michael Dorn. Um, they brought back a lot of the feel of the first two, but it's still an FPS. Mm-hmm. Um, though, of course, those have that nod to the players who don't like FPS. Did you ever pause it? Um, no, I don't know. They built Can the... Can you pause it? So Fallout... If, if oh, you yes, because Fallout yeah. 3, mm-hmm. you could pause yes. and then like assign actions or something. Yes. And it just felt like... A bunch of extra steps. You know the Rick and Morty mm-hmm. meme? Well, that's just turn-based with extra yeah. steps. Like, mm-hmm. just make it a turn-based game. Well, don't, no, don't, they, don't make me go through all the rigmarole. They did it because some of us, I, I would prefer to be playing an FPS mm-hmm. in most situations. Um, it's just that the writing is so, so good in those first two. Yeah. And the world is so weird in those first two. Um, <laughs> when you're doing sprites... And when um, you aren't voicing all of your dialogue, you are able to write cooler, weirder dialogue trees and have a more interesting, weirder world because polygons and rendering just, you have to spend a lot more time making your assets. And if you're going to fully voice your game, then you can't have as many dialogue trees. And Mm -hmm. you certainly can't have the weird ones that you could... In yeah. Fallout uh, 2, you know, kicker, you could be like, all right, we're going to spend a week uh, in the writing team and just kick out something real weird for people who put a one in intelligence. Yeah. Um, and just all the super weird yeah. stuff and the minor side characters mm-hmm. where you could have this gargantuan conversation. Yes. And they're not going to voice that for yeah. a, a Fallout 3. So since we're talking about single player shooters, mm-hmm. 
Um, did you play Borderlands? Did. Because Borderlands, Borderlands is one. Howard tried to get me into Borderlands mm-hmm. 2. And again, the same experience. Like these kind of single player shooters, I just can't Man. get into it all. I hated Borderlands 2 more than probably any wow. other game I've ever played. That's really weird. It is really weird. Why would you hate that so much? It's the Borderlands with good writing. I don't know. I didn't even experience enough of the writing. Um, mm-hmm. I was trying to play this character and... First of all, uh, the bad guys in it were bullet sponges, which yes. is not something I really love. I would um, agree with you on that. Uh, Fallout 2 was particularly bad on that one. Mm, they, Fallout 3? Or not or, Fallout, sorry. Uh, Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 was the bullet sponge one. Had the good writing and the worst bullet sponging, and they had to figure out a better balance um, mm. of that. Um, but all of the games, enemies are bullet sponges. Yeah. Um, you shoot them until they fall over and, um, but the Borderlands games are not fully, uh, enjoyable by yourself. Really? Uh, Borderlands, uh, are meant to, like I played Borderlands, the, the most recent one, I guess it's Borderlands three, played that with my kids. Mm. Right. Um, and when you're in a team together uh, playing and things like that. It's just, it's more fun of a game because it's its the same reason that playing an MMO by yourself is just not as much fun as having your team and going out yeah. together because the mechanics of Borderlands are not, you know, it's not like we're playing something like Doom Eternal, which is just really an innovation innovative use of the first person shooter really interesting mm-hmm. really well designed beautiful arenas to fight in that just um um and things like that it's not that it's instead here's a pretty standard uh shooter with some interesting level up mechanics borrowed from Diablo okay and a looter system borrowed from Diablo that you can play with your friends and see what cool guns drop. You know, the mm-hmm. the gun gun is the best example of Borderlands, right? It's a gun that shoots guns. Oh, um, I never got far enough into the game to see a gun that shot guns. That's kind of cool. Plenty of weird guns that do like, um, you know, Borderlands 3, there is a, uh, a gun that when you reload it, instead you drop the gun, it grows legs and a brain and follows you around and shoots people for 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> there are... Guns that uh, when you roll, run out of bullets turn into a grenade and you throw the empty gun and it explodes. Oh, that's um, cool. The, the whole idea of randomized generation of weird gun mechanics that you mm-hmm. can just find on guns is really fun. That is cool. Now, mm-hmm. the thing about Borderlands and about all of these others, Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. um, that confuses me about my own proclivities yeah. is... Overwatch, I love mm-hmm. because it's not just shooting. There's also powers. Yes. The fact that I had to learn a bunch of extra powers was the thing I hated most about Borderlands. Like, just let okay. me shoot people. Why are you making me do this dumb teleportation thing or whatever other nonsense? And I don't know why that, that is- works for me in the eSport Maybe because it's a team and I can think of it as positions, maybe because of the more contained uh, fights where, you know, it's basically, you know, King of the Hill or something like that. I don't know why it rubbed me the so far in the wrong direction with Borderlands. You are so weird. <laughs> and you are so weirdly inconsistent about games. I know. And the thing is, if it is a, a single person shooter... Um, that has extra powers, mm-hmm. I will not play it because I know I'm going to hate it. <laughs> you are so weird. Because I don't want extra powers. It's a shooting game. I want to shoot people. Just let me shoot people. Did you play Doom 2016? No, I've, I have played the original Doom and none of the mm-hmm. ones since then. Doom 2016. Thumbs up. Okay. Um, it's just shooting people? So here's... It is just shooting people, but here's a couple of things. Okay. Um. So... Really revolutionary. So if you haven't played original Doom, Doom and Wolfenstein kind of popularized and created this genre of you shoot at things and then you run and you find the ammo hidden in the special places. Mm -hmm. And then you shoot at more things and then you're low on health. So you go run and you find a health pack and you're balancing ammunition, health pack, um, and and shooting things. Doom 2016 posits the, what if we never made people stop shooting things? to find health packs or bullets. 
but we still don't want to just do the thing where you just have infinite ammo. So we want you to have to manage that. That's fun. Okay. So they changed it so that uh, if you run out of ammo, you chainsaw a bad guy and they explode into ammo. Okay. It makes no sense. Like they're like, we're, <laughs> we're not going to explain why chainsawing an ammo uh, a guy is and your chainsaw regenerates over time. You can use it. It's an auto kill. If you get it on a guy, you'll just chainsaw them in half and they will explode into ammunition. If hmm. you are low on health, if, it, if you find an enemy that's low on health and you perform your insta-kill, you have another insta-kill that you can only do on people who are flashing, which yeah. means they're almost near death. They will explode into health. Hmm. And they added in the later one <laughs> that if you're low on armor, you set a guy on fire and then kill them and they will explode into armor. Okay. Um, and so what happens is you go into, and they, it's arena-based, right? So they get, come up with, Doom's always been a little arena-based, but mm -hmm. this, they really leaned into it. There's this cool arena that's got like things that'll tell, you know, teleport you around or you'll jump on, they'll bounce you, just like all of that stuff from, yeah, yeah. Uh, from like the middle era of Dune, uh, Dooms when, um, you know, Unreal was coming out and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, some health packs and things like that, but they're like supercharges and things like that. And you'll know where those are in case you need to get them. But most of the time, it's like running around, shoot this guy, shoot this guy, shoot this guy. That one's flashing. Hit your uh, your insta-kill. You'll jump over. Um, and what's really smart at that is, is I thought I would hate it because I hate stopping the action to watch a kill animation, right? Okay. I hate that in Fallout. I'm like, yeah. eh, whatever. Why are you showing? But in this, it gives you a breather. You have like two seconds where your guy is uh, is doing his thing and he's invincible do it, during it. Mm -hmm. And he is finishing off this demon. And you're like, all right, I need to now, that gives you a moment to be like, all right, I need some ammo. I need to chainsaw the next one. I'm going to run over there. And then frantic action, not having you know, to stop. You're going around, you're finding these things. You chainsaw a guy, you get the ammo. The chainsaw animation takes just like a couple seconds or a second or so. And you're like, all right catch my breath, go this way. And mm. it feels like you never stop playing the game to go do the dumb fiddly stuff that you used to have to do. Yeah. Um, and it is just pulse pounding and That's exciting and fun and uh, really cool. I, I wonder if I would like that. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, one of the things that is consistent you know, as inconsistent as my likes and dislikes mm -hmm. are, one of the things that is consistent is I like uh, games where I can control the pace of them. Yeah. And I think maybe that's why Overwatch works is because it's divided into matches. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, I love stealth games and I know you don't. I dislike stealth games. I love yeah. stealth games like uh, Dishonored mm -hmm. and Splinter Cell and all of those. And again, it's because I get to approach things more tactically and slow down and kind of plan what I'm going to do mm -hmm. instead of, you know, my success is based on me outwitting the game rather than me just being really good at clicking on stuff. Right. But that's but that's interesting because I did, you know, I did love Serious Sam, but that might be the last time I really loved a single player shooter game. Right. Well, and Serious Sam had a different thing going for it. Partially was the humor. Mm -hmm. partially was the secret finding added a puzzle mechanic they they took doom and quake always had secret finding as part of it yeah and serious sam said well, let's make that a real part of the game like you clear an area and then you take a break seeing if you can find the goofy secrets we've put in because they're not just going to be health and ammo there's going to be a secret that turns you into a tiny six inch tall serious sam for a little while that mm -hmm. you will never see again and is only in this one place you're going to find secrets where <laughs> you get to make sam make a wisecrack you get you know they, they yeah. added some cool variety to those secrets mm -hmm. i did though love speaking of pacing i loved the aspect of Serious Sam where it would just dump free ammunition and you'd get into a room and you'd fight all the bad guys and you'd be like, oh, that was a tough fight. And then it would just drop a giant pile mm -hmm. of all of the ammo and all of the bombs and you'd think, oh crap. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to have to fight 4 million guys now mm -hmm. because that's why they gave me this. Uh, that was always a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that aspect of the game, of them as well. <laughs> so I want to know why you don't like stealth games. Is it because of the slower pace or? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one thing I don't like doing is I dislike games that make you do something tedious, 
followed by an instant fail state. Mm. Uh, really dislike games that do that. Okay. Um, one of the, the best things that Dark Souls ever did is once you know where the boss is, you are a faster runner than any of the enemies in Dark mm. Souls. Um, if you know where the boss is and you've gotten to the boss, you've scoped the layout, then you just run past all the enemies straight to the boss if you die. Um, they don't always give you a save point right before the boss, but even if they don't, it's a it's a matter of you know 15 seconds or a little bit longer of running through the level and going to the boss. What I hate is the stealth games. A lot of them are tedium, slow tedium. I know how to beat this level. I know how to do it. Oh, I got spotted by this random person turning around at this, and then I'm back to the start. And it mm-hmm. was it was just excruciating to get there. It's yeah. the sort of fake difficulty to me yeah. right this idea of um we're gonna make you and i i a lot of games do this and it really bothers me is mm-hmm. that they they use tedium as a substitution for difficulty and i don't i won't say the good stealth games do this a lot yeah. of great stealth games don't mm-hmm. um but across all games if i have to do something stupid repeatedly that i know i can beat then I get annoyed. There's a, there's a dungeon in the new Zelda that I really I, I really like the new Zelda, right? Okay. Um, but there's a dungeon that is your, um, you know, how deep can you go? How far can you get? And I really dislike in most games this um, infinite levels uh, sort of dungeons and things like that because what it means is the first 10 are tedious. Mm-hmm. The next couple are actually fun. And then you hit one that is really hard that you haven't done before and you die. And that one would be fun if you could restart and figure it out. But instead, you've got 10 tedious levels to beat before, before it gets you fun get back again. into that one. Um, and stealth games, in my experience, are that game. Yeah. Just repeatedly. Um, you're not wrong. Uh, and that actually uh, ties into what you were talking about with the kind of fan-made Mario levels, mm-hmm. where the way to get through it is to play it 400 times to learn the exact combo of right. how to get past this one weird challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stealth games that I really like, uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist is my favorite of that series. And it is most people don't like that one because um, you can play it stealth or you can play it in Mm -hmm. other ways and what that means is that if you're going for pure stealth because you want to get the achievements then there is an instant fail state because you've been spotted Mm -hmm. but every mission starts out as a stealth mission and you can just if you get spotted you're like well screw this i guess we're just going noisy now and you can play the rest of it noisy yeah deus ex is like that yeah Mm -hmm. uh dishonored does that as well does it uh and dishonored is one that's really good well, I mean, we talked about the Fallout games. Uh, I know you've said you didn't like them, but three, New Vegas, and four, I would often play a sniper, which is mm. a stealth version. Uh, mm-hmm. Same thing in Skyrim and things. It depends on my playthrough, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't find that nearly as tedious because um, the, the situations are randomized to the point that you can just approach from a different direction. You can try something new. And if you get spotted, if it doesn't work out, you can move to full on, I'm just going to try to fight my way out of this. And yeah. a lot of times you can do it. Mm-hmm. Not always. Um, but if you can't, it's probably because you're in a harder level that, or area than you should be, which I like to do a lot. And it's my own dumb fault, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. You know, I did try to play a sniper in Borderlands. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that I didn't like about it at all. Because... You know, I lined up this perfect shot, headshot mm-hmm. this dude, and no, it takes like three bullets to put that guy down, and then he catches up to you because he can mm-hmm. run really fast, and then you're not a sniper anymore, which is why I was playing the game, so. Well, and you don't like the powers. Like, I I, I played the sniper character in this new one, didn't I? I think I did. Um, I played, oh, the new one doesn't make you choose guns the same way the early ones did. Mm. Uh, so you can kind of roll any character. But um, the, you know one of the characters that I really like, the new one, has a doppelganger. You summon him, all the bad guys attack him. So oh. you summon your doppelganger. You have 60 seconds or whatever of the gar- doppelganger. Your character yells something funny. 
because he's the fun they're all funny characters but he's a funny character he's like oh there's the real one get him and then you fall back you pull out your sniper rifle and as they're attacking him mm -hmm. you shoot them one at a time um hmm. and in this one the little guys almost all go down with one shot oh well, uh, the big guys that might be more take fun for me more shots um but um and that worked but you have to be willing to use the power right you have to be willing to yeah. throw down that and you know he's got a shield you can put up also you put down your shield you can shoot through it but it blocks bullets coming at you and so you snipe some guys you know it used to be that i could rely on call of duty to be mm -hmm. the this is just pure guns and strategy kind yeah. of thing and even that is powers now is it? Yeah, Call oh, of Duty, weird. like depending on the class that you choose, you have access to different abilities. I don't want abilities. I just want to shoot people. How's that, Ben? Ben?